Student loan payments. I told you. How many times am I going to sit up here and tell y'all how right I am? And I'm always open to the possibility that I'm wrong, but I doubt it. How many times am I going to sit here and tell y'all how right I am? Just curious. Five, 10, 15 times a week. Y'all be forgetting what we be talking about because we talked about it last year and y'all said that Biden was going to have y'all back. Now we still sitting with this issue in the Supreme Court. And you know what was a part of the negotiation? You know what was a part of the negotiation as far as getting this whole debt ceiling thing uh, resolved? Student loan repayments. And guess what? The pause is off. The pause is off. Now, for those of you that decided to run in the Victim Olympics and you were praying and hoping and wishing and waiting for Biden to continue to extend the pause, the pause have been on for like three years. The pause has been on for like three plus years. And all of the interest and its glory is going to be coming back. So you had three years to get this taken care of. Three years. I warned you. I warned you. You had three years to get this taken care of. But you said, Anton, not only are we going to get our reparations, which you still have not got yet, but you're also going to get your student loans paused forever and get them forgiven. Curious. How many people in the chat have gotten their student loans forgiven and how many people are looking to still have their stuff on pause? Don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. We're going to talk about it today. Welcome to the Millionaire Morning Show, where we do not allow people to run in the Victim Olympics. I want to give you guys some more insight and information before we really get into the fuck shit today, all right? Make sure you hit a like for the YouTube algorithm, subscribe to the channel, and turn on, the, turn on your notifications. Let's get into the show, shall we? Federal student loan payments have been paused for more than three years. But as part of the debt ceiling agreement reached over the weekend, borrowers will likely have to resume making payments again in late August. And with recession concerns looming, our next guest says the move couldn't come at a worse time. Let's bring in Mark Zandi. He's chief economist at Moody's Analytics. Mark, it's good to see you. And I, I, I feel that every time we say the word recession, people are just going to be screaming at the TV saying, you know, it's not here. Where is it? Everything's fine. You know, it, it, but you know, articulate the concerns that you have and uh, about the timing of these repayments. Sure. And, I, you know, Kelly, just to be uh, uh, on bo uh, uh, above board, I, I don't think a recession is going to happen. And I don't think the student loan. Uh... Now, spit it out, sir. First things first. OK. Recessions are only a recession based off of specific factors that take place and play out inside of the economy. But realistically, for some of y'all, not the bag chaser, shout out to my Patreon members, for some of y'all, the recession has already been in place for a long time. Some people got laid off. They can't find work that allows for them to continue to maintain a lifestyle. Some people has been in a recession for their entire lives. Let me say that again for the people in the back. Some people have been in a recession already for their entire life. And they're so used to being poor, so used to being poor. What is this, uh, this receipt, honey? Uh, check the, um, check the email. I'm going to be reading Super Chat shortly. Oh, that's a refund. That's a refund. All right, cool. I'm like, wait a minute. I ain't just booked no Airbnb. They gave me a little bit of a refund. But some of y'all are so used to being poor that you don't even know what a recession look like because you're like, man, if I get any poorer than I am, then I'm going to be homeless. Used to living on Section 8. Mama been taking care of you your whole life, ain't never stepped out on your own. 
don't even know what it's like to pay a bill for yourself because you're so used to the federal government giving you the EBTs, the SNAP benefits. Some of y'all been finessing your whole life. You've been selling your SNAP benefits at 50 and 75% off. You didn't have kids so you can get additional SNAP benefits. Some people have been poor their whole life that they don't even know what a recession looked like. It's just a term. It's just a term that's being used in the news and the media. Y'all still streaming on your Obama phones? Hmm. However, student loans have been paused for over three years. And as a part of the agreement, Biden had to concede on some things. Guess what one of the things is that he conceded on? The fact that these pauses is going to start going back into effect starting in late August, early September. So just in time for the kids to come back to school. Now, you know what people did, Rita, before we even started to get into this? They adjusted their lifestyle to their new, the new monies that they had saved up or availability in a budget to then spend extra money. They thought that this pause was going to last forever. You had three years to completely get rid of the interest. And now you're about to be getting finessed. And all of these women that were overly enrolled and getting these trash degrees, basket weaving, underwater specifically, these basket weaving degrees, now they're going to be having a box on sale for $40 again, honey. $40 was the going, $39, $39.79 was the going price during the pandemic for box. Now the price of the box is going back down again. Market value, baby. Let's continue. Uh, in, in Reading super chat shortly. Pushes us in. But they're awake. Uh, you know, it's about 20 million student loan borrowers. Uh, they, they haven't been paying. Uh, they'll have to begin paying uh, more or less in September. By my calculations, $250 a month might be a little bit more, about $5 billion in increased payments per month. So you do a little bit of arithmetic. That'll shave a couple tenths of a percent off of GDP now over the coming year. Now, you know, in a more typical time, that's not really that big a deal. You know, the economy can digest that gracefully. But in the current environment with the economy as weak as it is, recession risks as high as they are, you know, a couple tenths of a percent, you know, can matter. But uh, I don't think that this is what's going to push us in. But it's certainly a, a weight at a pretty significantly opportune, inopportune time. You know, I think there's also some people who have to restart those payments going, what was the point? You know, it's nice to have the freed up capital for the, that period of time. But, you know, three years of, let's say, 250 or for whatever the payment is, I mean, a lot of people would have finished paying off those loans had the payments kept going. And now it's like, OK, now I face just having to draw this out for another three years time. And maybe I'm trying to buy a house and those costs per month are also sky high. So, it, you know, it's probably going to leave a very sour taste. The only sour taste that they should have in their mouth is the amount of uh, stuff that has to go in it as a result of them having to get that extra money because that $40 ain't enough. That's the only sour taste that they should have in their mouth because you signed up for the loans. Why do we need the federal government to manage our affairs, but then we don't want Big Brother Matt, overlooking us? You do realize that you took out the loan. So how is it going to leave a sour taste in your mouth and that they gave you an, an additional amount of time to actually reduce the amount of interest that you're going to pay on those loans by getting them paid off within three years? So here's the thing. Nobody told you to stop paying on your student loans. More of it would have went towards the principal that would reduce the amount of money that you have to spend in interest. For something that you signed up for. So now you adjusted your budget. You adjusted your budget to reflect the additional monies that you had because you thought that you, so now instead of you paying off your student loans, I've seen a lot of hussies over in Tulum. I've seen a lot of chicks going to get BBLs in Miami. They were sitting, butt in the air, on that spirit flight, couldn't sit down normal. Spirit, honestly, needs to just create a plane where the seats are reversed so that chicks can be sitting on their knees facing forward. Extra cushion on the floor, less cushion on the seat, because so many chicks were spending that money they were supposed to be paying off their student loans for in order to get that BBL. Spirit needs to create a plane 
that is reversed so that we can make these chicks more comfortable as they flying back and forth to Miami. No? You guys don't think so? The BBL plane? That way everybody feel comfortable and ain't nobody got to look awkward when they're getting on a plane because they know that somebody else looking at them trying to figure out why she's sitting on a plane and why she got all these body things on her. That's not normal. That's why the seats are not made that way. That is not normal. It's not normal. It's not. You know that when you get Airbnbs down in Miami or down in Southern Florida, that most places, a lot of places, literally will say in the listing, hey, listen, no surgery clients here because they already know that a lot of y'all is going to be staying there because y'all getting that BBL. You're looking for the cheapest place possible, couldn't afford to get there, had to get that body done. Now you're looking like an ant. And I'm not saying an ant, A-U-N-T. I'm saying A-N-T. You built just like an ant now. Looking dumb. You could have paid your student loans off. You could have been living a good life. You could have been sitting up here with me and the bag chasers, doing the things that you want to do, coming to the Patreon meetups in Florida, not giving more money over to the federal government, spending more money now on your investments and pouring that money into your assets so that they can pay for you to do the things that you really want to do. But now you sitting here trying to hold the government accountable for you not paying off your shit that you signed up for and don't make any additional money for. And what the hell is a master's in social work? How do you master social work? Well, yeah, I mean, number one, once start, you know, they weren't paying, now they're going to pay. But at the end of the day, they that was their decision, right? They could have still kept on paying. They, Facts. I mean, I, I would suspect most people understood that this was a temporary moratorium on payments because of the pandemic. Go back to the middle of the pandemic, people can go get, get to work, you know, the labor markets were disrupted. It was a pretty dark time. This was an, an effort to help uh, alleviate the pressure on a group of people that are you know, generally young. Running in the victim Olympics. Income, if they have any income and this makes life a little bit easier for them. But you're right. I mean, here we are, you know, three years later, and they're going to have to resume making those payments. And I suspect for, for a fair share of them, they might not be able to make it, right? Because I'm, I, my guess is they've mostly adjusted their spending to the higher, more cash they had. Now that cash is going away. So they're going to have to face some hard choices here. What do I do? Do I stop paying on my credit card? My, uh, do I, uh, am I late on my rent payment? It's just going to increase, uh, you know, the kind of juggling that people are going to have to do. But it, but, you know, back in the day, you know, I think they looked at it as a, a very positive thing, not a negative thing. We've even heard. Here's the thing. Let me let me give you all the tip of how it is that you're supposed to operate. Y'all want the truth? Don't worry about it. I'll give it to you anyway. I know you don't want it, but I'm going to give it to you anyway. Here's the key. Stop trying to keep up with people and impress people that don't care anything about you. Lower your lifestyle. Stop spending up to what your budget is and start trying to lower your lifestyle so that you can then make the right decisions and then not have your kids going through the exact same thing that you went through exponentially worse. What's wrong with having a lower lifestyle? What's wrong with actually lowering the cost of living? You got to be in a high rise. You got to be in a good the good big old house, your house got to be 7,000 square feet. I'm just curious, when are we going to actually make the right decisions for ourselves that ultimately pay off for us in the long run? Why do we have an inability in or to, to be able to see the long-term view of the benefits and the benefits of our decisions long-term? Every single portion of your life, you've made a bad decision. Based off of the idea that I want it now instead of looking at it later. You know the whole logic behind becoming a doctor? Be behind becoming somebody that is relevant in society, that has success and long-term longevity? You know the whole idea behind it is a long-term view, a longer-term view? They're willing to be poor in college and study while you go and party and then you go and get the quick bucks. Half of y'all only went to college so that you can party. You didn't go to college to actually get an education. Education was secondary. Partying was, was, was first. Think about it. Our culture, and I'm not even talking about black people. I'm talking about American culture, is this. This is the culture. Every single part of your life has been a bad decision. You had a child out of wedlock. You shouldn't have been opening your legs in the first place, and you should have never not got married before you opened your legs. Cool. 
went to school, accumulated a bunch of debt, got indoctrinated with liberal left views because that's what they're teaching you. You went into African-American studies, accumulated a bunch of debt, decided to get your master's degree. Now you got $100,000 in student loans. Awesome. Then you got out and said, you know what, but I want a luxury vehicle. So you got a BMW 3 Series because it was a BMW or you went and got an Audi. Instead of downgrading and get you, getting you a used Malibu for $2,000, you had to go out and live on your own instead of going to live with your parents and going back home so that you can then build up your net worth and then lower your debt so that you can give less money over to the federal government over, or over to the services of the loan. But life threw you a curveball. It threw you an opportunity to really get yourself out of it. So it said pandemic time, free money, pandemic money, all of that. But you know what you did? You went and got a PPP loan instead. You went and got a PPP loan. Never mind the, the long-term view and the opportunity it takes. Every single opportunity God has given you a bailout. He keep throwing you a life jacket. He keep throwing you a, a, a you sink the boat, and then he keep throwing you an opportunity. Here, you pray for it. You go to church. You go and you let somebody bust in your mouth in the morning, and then on, on Saturday night, and then Sunday you go to church and you say, God, forgive me. Make my life better. I promise I'm never going to do it again. And then you do something else. And then you do something else. And at every single turn, God has thrown you a life jacket. He has thrown you an opportunity for you to fix yourself. And then you come on here and you're going to keep telling me about how it's the government's fault, how it's black people's fault, it's white supremacy's fault, it's that dude that fucked you and then ghosted you fault, it's somebody else that made you have them kids, it's your mama fault, it's your daddy fault, it's your grandparents' fault, it's, it's the system's fault, it's Biden's fault, it's Trump's fault, it's my fault for telling you the truth, it's, it's Kevin Samuel's fault. It's everybody's fault but yours. At what point are we going to take the life jacket, climb out of the ocean, get back in the boat, and then figure out our lives and then make better decisions instead of continuing to pass on generational curses to the next person that's then going to do the exact same thing? At what point will we stop saying that it's everybody else's fault, stop looking out the window and start looking in the mirror? Just curious. It's everybody else's fault why you out here being dusty dusty both men and women it's inflation's fault it's the shipping company's fault it's china's fault it's the military it's ukraine's fault it's the rapper's fault what about you what about you at what point are we gonna wake up and say hey I'm tired of being the dustiest person in my circle. I don't want to be the person that always can't go nowhere because I don't never got no money.